Well, what an exciting time. Some good-looking bodies in the building, uh, some tremendous football players and athletes. Uh, glad that they're Cleveland Browns. A lot of kudos to uh, John Dorsey and the personnel group and the coaches. Uh, what a plan put in place, executed. Um, pick up a lot of uh, guys that we felt that's going to help this organization get to winning as fast as possible. But I think we all recognize and know you don't win right now. This is just the starting piece of putting everything together so we have an opportunity when football season comes around to showcase our abilities and tech and our abilities and our opportunity to play football at a winning level. So, but it is, it's, um, it's a great time to be a Cleveland Brown. And so we're excited about it and plugged a lot of holes and, and um, uh, added some depth to our football team. And, and again, it's just, it's just a start. So again, it's exciting, but we got a lot of work to still do. Coach, it was, um, it was kind of felt that you liked Tyrod Taylor a year ago. Mm -hmm. And so now that you have him, is that, is that accurate that you liked him a year ago? And, and what is, how much do you like it, the fact that he's here now? I'm, I'm very excited that he's here. A year ago, uh, we did have some overtures uh, back and forth about him then as well. And uh, we were able to, obviously, last year was last year. He played for them, led them to the playoffs. And, and, uh, but for him to be here now is very exciting for me uh, and also for our offensive staff. You know, we uh, sat with our personnel group and watched all the quarterbacks. Uh, we made a decision what we thought was best for the Cleveland Browns. Tyrod Taylor was best for the Cleveland Browns. He's our starting quarterback. Very excited about it. he bring to the table that you like? I mean, you know, just do you like the dual threat part of it or arm strength? What are some of the things you it's really a, like? It's a combination of all those things. I think he's um, – one, one thing he's done a great job is, of doing is taking care of the football, is putting the offense in the best position uh, to score points. Um, obviously, he has arm talent. Uh, he also can, can win games with his legs. Um, and he's a leader of men. You know, this guy's work ethic is second to none. He comes early, stays late. Uh, he's a, another coach on the field. Uh, he's really worked at his game. I think he's improved in some area every year. And uh, again, uh, what he did in Buffalo by leading him to the playoffs says a lot. You know, this guy walks in the building having more wins than a lot of people in this building. So uh, hopefully a lot of that goodwill will rub off on this organization. Just last week, I, I mean, especially Friday when the news started to break about Tyrod and Jarvis and, 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 and uh, Hall. Um, what was your mood, reaction to all that? And just touch on the, the field the last week with, with all these new faces getting well, in. Well, it was very exciting for me. You know, I think, um, you know, any time when you don't win, which we hadn't, you have to do something to change change the, uh, the course of the team, the course of the organization. And to me, that started a while back when we hired John Dorsey. I think John Dorsey's a, a football guy who puts a lot of work into it uh, with Alonzo and, and uh, Elliot uh, and our coaching staff, hiring Todd Haley and keeping Greg uh, in his position and getting everybody in a room together and making a decision about what we thought was best and then coming up with a plan and watch it start to execute itself, you know, and watch it start to happen. I mean, these moves that we made were by design. I mean, we, we worked at this. This was the plan. And that says a lot, you know, and I think, uh, again, I give John a lot of credit for that because he's the crafter of the plan. And um, through him, we were able to execute it and, and get some better players on our team. Um, you're kind of singing that Joe Thomas song. Absolutely. I've been singing it for days, for days. How did you know um, that he was going to? I'm not going to say did I know. I mean, John, Joe was always in constant communication with us. Um, obviously, you know, uh, he waited to the last uh, second to make a decision. We were still holding out hope that Joe would not go, that he would stay. Um, you know, and, and I still hold out hope. But again, he's made it very clear that he's not going to play. I think you guys all know what Joe means to me and what I think he means to this organization. My disappointment is that we never got him to winning. He's, this guy's going to be a Hall of Fame. He was a Hall of Fame player. Uh, who hadn't won a lot of football games. And that's unfair because I don't think people truly understand how good Joe Thomas is as a football player, as a person, um, as a, you know, a, a person within the community, the whole nine yards. So 
uh, I'm going to miss Joe. But Joe, as I told him today again, I'm going to always reiterate to him, this is still his football team. He still has a fob that gets in the door. His locker will stay the same and it'll be in the same place. His place on the plane will be the same if he wants to go. That's how much I think of Joe Thomas. And uh, it, he'll be missed. With this one practically now, how do you fill that spot? I don't think you fill that spot. I mean, somebody's got to go play left tackle. There's no question. But do you really replace a Hall of Fame player in the organization? I mean, we hope to go draft another Joe Thomas someday. But Joe Thomas is not in this building. He's not coming back this year. We're going to play somebody over there at left tackle. We're going to give some guys opportunities to do it. But I, I hope nobody in here thinks that the next Joe Thomas is going to go play over there this season. That we got to go find that guy, you know, just like anything we find. But we're going to play some guys, and they're going to play their tails off. There's no question in my mind. Um, we're going to pay, you know, we got some athletes here that we think can play. We're going to play the best five guys. But obviously, somebody's got to start over there first. I'm going to, you know, tinker around with the offensive line a little bit. Maybe, you know, move Sean Coleman over there, who was our starter at right tackle, because we were very fortunate to get Chris Herbert, Hubbard here. So I think there's an opportunity to still be a good offensive line, but we're not going to be the same line without Joe Thomas. There's no question about that. Around when you say that, that you're still holding out hope, or are you going to well, try I to mean, Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not kidding. I mean, I, Joe can call me any time and say he changes mind. But no, I know that's not going to happen. I mean, he said it, and I, and I believe him. Uh, but we all do wish that, you know, he was here. But he's not. And so we're going to move forward, and he's going to help us move forward because he'll still be here helping and help mold these men to be the best they can be. Tyron and Jarvis both walk in here with a lot of charisma. With Swag. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does that do for you? Oh, my gosh. It gives me back my swag. <laughs> no no uh, juice. And his, his nickname is Juice. Juice Landry. He, he does have juice. He is a tremendous football player. Obviously, uh, his, his stats speak for themselves. He brings a proven uh, football player in the building who has a lot of intensity, a lot of pride about what he does, and uh, we're looking for that to, to show here for our football team. You look at uh, Tyrod, I mean, he, the way he carries himself. I mean, you can tell he's very proud of his accomplishments. And I know that this everybody's talking about the past and what's gone on here. I don't think that's what phases him. You know, he's been in tough situations before. I think we all understand the situation we're in, but we got a lot of work to do. But those are two guys that you start to turn, uh, change the narrative with and change the culture with. These guys are good players, and uh, they're not going to come here and all of a sudden change. They're going to come here and play well for us. It's the recruitment. Just kind of curious. I mean, you I'm signed, sorry. How hard was the recruitment? You end up signing seven players. You probably got some more on the way, but I mean, you, could you just talk about that aspect? Well, I think I made a statement before, you know, it's a war, you know, for us on talent, you know. And, I, again, I think it starts with John Dorsey. I'll keep going back to John. His relationships with agents and his reputation preceded him. Right now my reputation is not very good, you know. And I told John, you got you to gotta hold up that slack uh, right now until we can get this thing changed, you know. But, obviously, um, my relationships and the people that I know around the league and, and Elliot and Alonzo and then our coaching staff, Todd Haley being here, we use every resource possible to make these guys understand that the culture here is going to change and that we're going to get to winning as fast as we can. You at the combine said you really won a quarterback competition. There's been too many of those. I know you just a few minutes ago said Tyrod's our starter. No so question. Is that safe to say that there's no competition? He's going to open the season? He's going to be a starting quarterback. There is no competition. Going into the spring, knowing here on March 15th who your starting quarterback is. This is the first time I've had a chance to do that. <laughs> That's what it does for me. It really um, gives me a chance to show the rest of the team who the leader of the, the franchise is. It's, it's going to be Tyrod Taylor. And we're going to get in line with him and follow him, and he's going to lead this organization to winning. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to trade Kaiser? Can you talk about the decision? Thank you. Again, it was an organizational decision. You know, we know we needed to uh, improve in the secondary. Uh, obviously, Deshaun's a young player, and we wish him well. I still think Deshaun's going to have a tremendous career in the National Football League. Uh, but obviously, we wanted somebody with experience, you know, that have played and won in the National Football League. And we made that decision. It was Tyrod. Uh, again, those are all hard decisions to make. But we think we improved our football team in some other areas that we needed to. And sometimes those things happen. And I think you guys all can, can understand that. John Dorsey was just talking about having a 
private workouts with quarterbacks. Uh -huh. When you sit with these rookie court, potential rookie quarterbacks and you say to them, you're definitely not going to start. Tyrod Taylor is our starter. Will their response matter to you? Will that be a factor? Uh, it could be, but it could not be. I think... Um, I think the young players who have not played in the National Football League is, is just that they hadn't played. Uh, there's a lot of things to learn. We've played young players here the last two years, and that hasn't worked. You know, let's just be honest, that hasn't worked uh, the best for us. And so we know that. And so I think grooming a young quarterback, um, letting him learn, sit and learn and grow, and understand what it takes to play in the National Football League is truly the way to do it. All situations are different. You know, and, and you go into this saying Tyrod's the, the starter, God forbid something ever happens, but we got to make sure we have other quarterbacks that are ready to play too. So, you know, whoever the backup quarterback is going to be a play away, you know, um, and we're going to draft a quarterback at some point here. I think we all know that. But, again, that guy just needs to know that the starter here is going to be Tyrod Taylor. A lot of people are looking at Tyrod as a bridge guy to that whoever you take. There's that magic word. Right. <laughs> um, do you see him like that? No. How do you I, I, I honestly, I get tired of hearing that word, bridge. This guy's a starting quarterback on our football team, you know. There's no bridge players. This guy goes out and gets this organization to winning and, and get us to the playoffs or whatever all that is. I mean, we wouldn't, none of you guys would be writing bridge anymore. You'd be talking about this is your quarterback. So I see this young man as our quarterback, you know. And, again, if we draft somebody that in the future that's a better player, that will all take care of itself in time. But uh, I don't – he's not a bridge. He's our starting quarterback. A couple more. Ten new players, and I, I haven't counted, but more than half have playoff experience. How does that change – I see you smiling again. Yes, I am. How does that change the mindset, the personality of this team? What does that inject? What Winning. That inject? Those guys know what that's about. I mean, I, I never forget the first day I walked up here on this podium coming from Cincinnati. I knew what that was about. Because that's truly what it's, it's getting into the tournament. It's winning. That means you've won. Those guys know what that feels like. Those, none of those young men that you met today came here with the thought process that they're coming here to, to lose or anything like that. They came in here with the mindset that they're going to win and they're going to go in that locker room and they're going to share their experiences with these other young guys we have and the other veteran players that we have. And we're going to talk about what it takes to get an organization to winning. And it takes a lot of work, too, don't get me wrong. But it takes players that have experienced, experienced it and been there because they know what that, that grind is. They know what that's like. So the more guys we have in the locker room that's experienced it, the better chance we have of getting there. How does Tyrod's arrival impact uh, the chances of you taking a quarterback at number one overall? I don't think that has anything to do with anything. You know, I'd, I'd rather – if that's the, the decision that we make as an organization to take a quarterback at one, then we will, you know. But it's Tyrod's the starting quarterback. You know, that, that's not going to change that. You, uh, uh, all the quarterbacks that Haley has worked with seem to be bigger, more mm -hmm. traditional drop-back passers. So what is it about Tyrod Taylor that allows you guys to get out of that mold of what Haley calls it? I think what, what Todd, me and Todd discussed is that, you know, again, I think he said it to you guys before. You know, it's all about fitting – it's not about system. It's about fitting what we do to the players that we have that's at our disposal. And this was a young man that gave us a chance to do a lot of different things that we have done, that he's done, that I've done, that we can, you know, craft something together to give us the best chance to have the best offense. And when it came down to it, he was the guy that gave us that chance. It was his mobility at the determining factor? I think his ability to throw the football, too. I mean, the guy completes – a high level of his passes, and he takes care of the football, and he has the ability to make plays with his legs. AJ McCarron. I know. Again, it's it's not about comparisons or anything like that. We made a decision that this was best. And again, I I think it was said earlier. I think sometimes because of the AJ connection with me in Cincinnati, I think everybody thought that's what it was. And and because of the opportunities a year ago, that's not what this was about. I mean, nobody in this room knew that last year we were trying to get Tyrod Taylor too. So here it is. I mean, we are able to get a guy on the football team that I feel really good about, that our offensive staff feel really good about, and our personnel staff feel really good about. Was that before the trade deadline you're talking about? That you I'm sorry. When did you No, last year, be the off season. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you like about Carlos Hyde? How do you see him? Oh, boy. You're in Todd's Oh, boy. Team. He likes to carry that ball. That guy's a violent runner. He goes downhill and he bounces off of people and he keeps on going, you know. And I, again, in order for us to be the type of team I think that we want to become, uh, you know, late in the year, 
you know, when it becomes November, December, January, you got to be running football, you know, and you got to be able to line up and knock the other team off the ball and hand the ball to somebody that's going to make plays. And that's who Carlos Hyde is. Uh, he's played in these elements before. He understands it. I think he's excited about the chance to be back here doing doing this. And uh, we're going to give him every opportunity to run the ball. Just tell Two us more. what, what um, how you think Gordon and Landry is it? as a tandem can accomplish and what that can do for you in, in matchups? Again, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to use all the combination words that people do, but I think it's going to be a really good mix. Um, you know, Jarvis has, has done a tremendous job of playing inside and playing off of linebackers and safeties, and he's been hard to cover. And then you look at Josh, you know, and what he brings to the table, you know. Uh, you think of Corey Coleman, a young ascending Corey Coleman, if he can comes back here and play as well as he can play, and, and Duke Johnson and David Njoku. And again, there's so many other weapons now when you add this kind of these kind of players to your arsenal, and especially guys who are proven, who've made big time plays in the National Football League. So what these guys will become, it will it will become as hard as they work. You know, whatever I think these guys want to be, they can be, but they got a lot of work to do. You basically flip the back end of your defense. Um, uh, are you having to control Greg Williams' excitement right now? <laughs> he is very excited. The, the the Matt Magician's up there. I should call him the Matt Blitzer. He's up there finding different packages right now. No, he's excited. I mean, it's – again, uh, I can't say enough how important it is for the alignment of the organization with John and myself and, and sitting down and talking about the areas of our football team that we needed to improve. And, um, and how the positions affect the game. You know, obviously the quarterback position uh, at receiver and in the secondary. I mean, those are prime positions that affect the game. And so you got to continue to improve in those areas as fast as you can. And again, the planning of uh, John's staff and our staff to come together and start to make that happen is truly what, what this is all about. You know, and this is what's going to give us a chance to get to where we need to be. When you go out, you, when you go out and you do these privates with the quarterbacks and you bring them in here into Berea, what would you tell them about their their chances of, of starting for this football team? That Tyrod Taylor is the starter? I mean, Mary Kay, I, I don't think these young men, just because he's a starter doesn't mean that the guys are not going to want the chance to start. I think they understand. I mean, there's a lot of these teams that are going to look at quarterbacks too that they're not going to have a chance to play. So I think guys understand that. You know, now are they going to compete and be competitive and do everything they can to be out there? That's what we expect from them. You know, that's why you want a guy on your football team. But at the same time, you have to have a starting point, and our starting point is going to be Tyrod Taylor.